Ms. Van Sambouchon from the University of Alberta. Thank you. I think I'm on. Yes. All right. Well, thank you uh, very much. Uh, so yeah, I figured I would give uh, an introduction to area structures uh, because I figured most people here probably didn't know too much about the whole story of the Boltzko recursion and area structures. So may as well just give an introduction. But the way I'll introduce it is fairly new. So area structures were first uh, proposed by Konsevich and Sutherland in 2017, I think as a framework, uh, algebraic framework to make sense of uh, the topological recursion that has been going around for years uh, by uh, Inal and Arante. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll introduce area structures in a slightly different way, which uh, was uh, we wrote in this uh, fairly recent paper with Thomas and uh, our former PhD student, Aniket uh, Joshi. So uh, it will be in the language of D modules and Val algebra. So that's, uh, that's what I'll do today. So please stop me whenever you have questions as usual. So the starting point from my point of view is in savage within which we all know and love. So this is all about 2T, 2D quantum gravity. So there's like various aspects to Konsevich within. So one way to start is to construct a partition function. So there's a whole bunch of sums here. I'm just being schematic here because I just want to highlight the properties, but you can write down a big generating function here uh, for some numbers, FGNs, which in the theory of 2D quantum gravity becomes, they become integrals over the moduli space of curves. So the standard intersection number over the moduli space of curves. So this is the main object of interest uh, in the study of Savage and Witten. And I would call that the geometric side of the story. So it's basically a generating function for some enumerative environment. In this case, probably the simplest one, intersection numbers over MDN block. And now, of course, the big uh, story of uh, the Witten's conjecture, which was proved by Konsevich, is that this partition function is very nice and satisfies some nice integrability property. So in particular, it is a uh, particular tile function of the KDV hierarchy. So the more precise statement would be that if you construct an object U, to the second derivative of the log of the partition function, then this is the unique solution to the KDV hierarchy with a given initial condition, which is that we set everything to zero except the first variable we take just P0. So if you do that, uh, you recover precisely this partition function. Okay, so this is the integrable system part of the story. And this kind of connection here, it's gonna be a small arrow, is basically Konsevich with it. So within conjecture proved by Konsevich using matrix form. Yes, great. Uh, now, this is not really what I wanna talk about. So, but there's a third kind of point of view, I would say on Konsevich with them, which is uh, that you can rewrite or you can basically uh, compute Z uniquely in terms of differential constraints. And the idea is to construct some differential operators. I'm gonna call them LI. So I'm not gonna write down exactly what these are, uh, but they have very explicit formulas. So these are differential operators in the variables T here, uh, quadratic differential operators, and they satisfy, so this is for all integer I greater or equal to minus one, and they satisfy the via zero algebra, so there's no central charge here because I'm only taking this part of the Virazo algebra. And you can show, uh, there's an, that's another statement that you can show is equivalent to this. That's an untrivial statement that it's equivalent to saying that Z is a tau function, is this particular tau function as a KDV hierarchy. But you can show that, and this, once you write down explicitly what these differential operators are, that uniquely fixes Z. So in other words, it calculates all the intersection numbers via these differential constraints. These are called Virazo constraints, usually. So I'm gonna call them differential constraints because we're gonna work beyond Virazo. And one could say that this is another point of view on within Konsevich conjecture. Here. 
Okay, so that's kind of the starting point, these three things, which are relations between geometry, differential constraints, or you know, differential representations of some algebras, and integral systems. Now, one way to think about area structures is as a generalization of this arrow here. So there's many ways you could think of trying to generalize that. So one way is to uh, study things like Dirazol conjecture for Gromotan invariants. So in that in in that in, in that conjecture, the idea is that you replace the FGNs here by more general and immersive invariants, like Gromotan invariants of some Calabio threefold or some manifold in general. And then you can ask that there exists a representation of the Virazul algebra, which is such that it kills Z. So that's one possible way you can generalize that. That's the Virazul conjecture, which has been studied for many years. But there's another way you can try to generalize it, which is to, instead of starting with a particular enumerative problem, say a particular Gomotan theory and asking whether there are differential constraints, you could say, well, I'm going to try to generalize these constraints such that, so in other words, I want to study more general constraints, but I want to keep the requirement that there always exists a unique solution of that form. I don't know what is going to compute, but I know there's always going to be a unique solution. And that's basically the idea of every structure. So it's a generalization of these constraints such that they always exist in any Okay, yes. Yeah, so I think the first thing is that 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 don't have them in my notes and I don't remember them by heart. So. Okay, so that's the general idea. So the goal is to generalize the differential constraints such that there always exists a unique solution of the form, unique solution Z of the form. Yeah, so what is airy about this? So why is it called airy structure? So that's a very good question. I think the reason is because uh, exactly what you said. So the, the prototypical example of an airy structure is this, is the Virazul constraints for intersection numbers. And uh, the way this is proved is by, by constructing a matrix model, which is airy, the Konsevich airy matrix model. So it's kind of an airy equation for matrices. So I think that's where, that's why Konsevich called it airy structure. Okay, so that's the goal. And uh, I'm gonna explain that in three different steps. So the first thing that we wanna do, so we wanna generalize these differential operators. So these differential operators live somewhere in general. So we wanna define the space in which they live. Uh, so that's the first step. So this is going to be uh, the completion of the Rees Val algebra. So I'll explain what this means. So that's going to be the first part of my talk, which should be fairly quick. I'll just explain what the space is where these operators, these more general operators will live. Okay, the second step of the talk will be to somehow make these constraints a little more, uh, I would say, not abstract, but maybe a little better, uh, a better way of understanding them. So if you have, if the LKs kill Z, then instead of writing like, Writing it like this, you can basically define a left ideal in your space here, generated by the LK. So let's call this left ideal I. And then the constraints just become the statement that I times Z is equal to zero, right? Because it's a left ideal. So of course, everything is has an LK on the right. So it will certainly kill Z. So that's a slightly more invariant way of saying the same thing. And so the second step of what I, I will do is try to define what this kind of equation means in the more general language of modules, uh, of D modules or modules of the Val algebra. So here I want to define, so there's an action here. So I is a left ideal, so it's basically an ideal in the Val algebra. So it acts on something, so that's a module. So to define this, I'll have to introduce what we call modules of exponential type. So these would be exactly the type of modules that are generated by such partition functions here. That will be the second part of my talk. 
And the third part of my talk will be to explain what are the conditions that we need to impose on these ideals here in the Riesval algebra, exactly such that there exists a unique solution, which in the language of Val algebra would be the statement that the quotient of the Val algebra by the ideal is uh, canonically isomorphic to a cyclic module generated by this partition function. So that will be the third part, and that's basically the definition of area ideals or area structure. So that's the three parts of my talk. Okay. Okay, so, so that's the goal. And uh, at the end, I'll give some examples. Probably won't have too much time, but I'll give some, just in words, a few examples of why this is interesting and what kind of uh, immersive problem do you get out of that, right? Because we're, we're concentrating on this, but the goal is to get something interesting at the end. So get a partition function that is interesting for some reason. Okay, so let me first define what this Ries Val algebra is which is going to be the space where the differential operators live. So now I'm not gonna call them LK anymore. I'll call them HK because they're not the reservoir operators. So just to make it clear that they don't satisfy the Virazo algebra in general. Okay, so what is the Ries algebra? So let me introduce some notation. So first A is going to be some index set, which will index my variable. So that could be a finite index set, or it could also be countably if infinite, everything works, even if it's infinite, so that's, that's good. Now I will introduce the standard Val algebra, which is basically the algebra of differential operators over the ring of polynomials in my variables X. You can also think of it as the free associative algebra of uh, generated by the X and the Dells modulo the commutation relations between those. So that's the standard Val algebra that you probably know and love, but to make sense of all of that, I need to introduce this parameter H bar, which is absolutely crucial to the whole story. So I don't wanna just look at the Val algebra, I want to make it into an H bar and hence Val algebra. And the way to do it is to uh, realize first that this is a filtered algebra. So I need to specify a filtration, an ascending filtration on the algebra. So that's basically a, sequence of subspaces for the algebra, things like that all the way to uh, the whole thing. So this is an exhausting, exhaustive uh, ascending filtration. And there's many filtrations you can choose on the Val algebra. So the one I'll choose to define area structure is what's called the Bernstein filtration. So what this is, is uh, quite simple. So the subspace I is given by, so let me write it down, but now I explain what this means. Also oh, sum over indices here. Um, and then you take something like this, where this is a polynomial, but it should depend on the variable of degree. That's so equal to R. So what you're doing here is that you're basically kind of assigning degree one to all the variables and all the derivatives. So your subspace here is going to be all the combinations which have degree uh, less or equal to i, which is the index of the subspace, right? So for example, if you're in F2, you would get uh, things like, I don't know, X2, del one, uh, del two, del one, things like that, but also things of degree one, like X1, and so on, because that's a filtration. So you include the things of lower degree as well in your subspace. Okay, so that's the very standard filtration on the Val algebra. You can check that it's a filtration uh, that's a well known. It's easy to, to do just like us. I think the group is. So. Okay. I see a puzzle. Look, everyone's happy. Good. So if we have a filtered algebra, how do we create a graded algebra? out of a filter that any ideas? Flip classroom. Was that? Introduce a grading, yes, but but the, the Val algebra is not a graded algebra. So we, we have to make it great. So if you have a filtered algebra, there's, there's a very standard way of doing it. 
which is not what we're going to do. So uh, the standard way is to basically take the quotients, right? You take a space and quotient by the space just before, and that create what's called the associated graded algebra, the filtered algebra. But that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is do what's called a Reese construction. So what is this? So we introduce a parameter H bar. So the idea is to create a new algebra. So it's not the same algebra now, but it will be graded. And the way you do it is quite simple. You just take the direct sum of all your subspaces. And that becomes a graded algebra by powers of H bar. So it's kind of a very, very simple statement. So in other words, H bar is degree one, everything else has no degree in this grading. So it's not the same as the Bernstein filtration here. And that becomes graded, which is which is clear. That's always true for any filter algebra. If you take the direct sum, the subspaces with some parameter, h bar or epsilon, whatever you want to call it, uh, you always get a graded up. So that's called the Ries construction. So we'll call that the Ries val algebra. But it's not quite where we want the differential operator to live. We need to do a little more, so we need to complete it. So look at the h adic completion. So what this means simply is that we're going to take a direct product instead of a direct sum. So we allow power series and h. That's all that we're doing. Okay, but it's not it's not just arbitrary power series and h bar in the sense that for each degree in the power series coefficient must be in that subspace. So it's going to be a differential operator, so some element of the Val algebra, but in that subspace. So with like uh, degree less than R, or less than R. Okay. Very clear. So that is the Ries Val algebra, and this is where our uh, operators will live. So now we need to We need to move to step two, which is to now construct modules for this algebra. Oh. Right, there's a refined version, yes. So uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but that's certainly a very interesting question. So in terms of area structure, there is no refined version of area structures, but there's been a lot of work on refined versions of topological recursion, which um, yeah, I won't have time to talk about this because I'm not really going to introduce the false recursion, but, but yeah, uh, for, from the point of view of what I'm talking about, that hasn't been studied. So I don't know what that would mean. You'd have to extend, yeah, define the space in a different way to have two parameters here. Um, yeah, that's actually a very interesting question. Okay, so that was the first step, which I told you would be uh, fairly straightforward, which was the construction of the space. Now, the second step is to look at modules, and in particular, we'll want to construct what we call modules of exponential time for this algebra. So let's start with the Val algebra because this is well known. So let's just start with, there's no H bar, just the standard Val algebra and in, in, in the variables. So what kind of modules do we know? Well, there's one very simple module, which is the polynomial module. So that's gonna be our starting point. So this is basically just a uh, space of polynomials in your variables. And of course, there's an action of derivatives on polynomials and you get back polynomials so it's module for for your value and it you know it's a very simple module has all kinds of nice property it's cyclic it's generated by one the unit polynomial that's obvious uh what else uh, the annihilator so basically all the differential operators in your val algebra that kill the generator is basically uh the left ideal generated by the derivatives.
that's also clear because derivatives show one. So, so that also means that if you take the quotient of your algebra by this annihilator, so by all of this, well, of course, if you mud out everything that has a derivative, you end up with the polynomial module. So that's all very straightforward. But that's what we want to generalize. So now what we want to do is look at the Ries val algebra. So we'll have to introduce some H bar in the module as well. And then that will give a natural generalization of that. And then we'll want to generalize it to allow arbitrary partition function, which will be the definition of these modules of exponential. Okay, so let's introduce H bar. So if you have a Ries algebra, the natural way of introducing H bar in the module is to construct Ries modules. So in other words, you want to look at filtered modules. So you want to look at the filtration on the module that is consistent with the filtration on the algebra. So what this means is you get an ascending uh, sequence of subspaces for, for your module, but such that if I take an element in one subspace of my algebra, act on a subspace of the module, I'll get something in the in i plus j subspace of the module. That's the definition of a filtration for the module. Again, there are many choices here we could take, but the natural one is the degree filtration for polynomials. So this is basically saying that the subspace fi of the space of polynomials is set space of polynomials of degree less or equal to i. So it's basically filtered by degree, and it's easy to check that this is consistent with the Bernstein filtration just by action of derivatives, which decrease the degree of free number. Okay, so once you have a filtration in your module, you can define the Ries module. So what you do is the same thing as before. You take now a subspace, the sum of the direct sum of the subspaces here. And that turns out to be a graded module for the uh, Ries Val algebra. And you can also define its completion in H bar, which is what we're going to have to work with, which means you just allow, again, power series in H bar, but the coefficients are all polynomial of degree less than R. So it's not just arbitrary stuff. You have a very well defined completion here. You're just looking at power series in H bar, not in the Okay, and that's basically a left the AH bar hat module. Okay, and in fact, it has all the same properties as here. So this is a cyclic left module. It's again generated by one. Is again easy to see. Uh, the annihilator in the completion here of one is the left ideal generated by derivatives, but now you have to be careful. So derivatives cannot come alone in the Ries by algebra because you have they come in the subspace that must uh, come with at least one power of h bar. So if you look at the left ideal generated by those, this is precisely everything that kills one. So that's the annihilator. So this will play a role in the construction. So I'll call it the canonical left ideal. And just like we had here for the Val algebra, to quotient by this ideal, you get back the completed polynomial module. Yeah, so that's because of the definition of the Ries Val algebra. So you see the Ries Val algebra is like this. So a derivative is in F1 or F2, F3, all the higher ones, but it's not in F0. So it has to come with at least a power of H bar. It could come with higher powers of H bar, but you only need those to generate the whole annihilator. Okay. Okay, so that's the natural construction of the, of the module. But that's a very simple module. I mean, way too simple to get anything interesting. So now we have to construct 
exponential module or modules of exponential type. Right, so another way of thinking about it. So if, if you have the module here, that uh, this module we just constructed, one way to think about it is, the, is that the canonical ideal kills one, right? That's what it says to say that the annihilator of one is the this ideal. And it's in fact, it includes everything in the Val algebra that kills one. So that's, that's what this means. So if you remember what we're trying to do, what we want to do is generalize this to become a much more interesting ideal than just the ideal generated by derivatives, which is very simple. And generalize this to become not one, but some interesting partition function. Okay, so that's our goal. So we need to define this kind of module. So that's what we do. The modules of exponential type are going to be just modules, cyclic modules, cyclic left, the A bar, A H bar hat modules generated by an arbitrary partition function, which takes the form that we want. So this will be a sum Just make sure I got the, and this is right. Yes. So this is basically an exponential of a sum in H bar, and these are polynomials of degree less or equal than K plus two. Now you can. This is just another way of rewriting what we had in the beginning in terms of FGNs. This was just the extended version of this sum, so it's exactly the same as what we had. Before. Okay. So now this doesn't live. This exponent here doesn't live actually, in in this this three module because the degree is higher than the power of h bar but that's fine because what what you do here is you define the module with the action being the standard action of derivatives on the exponential and when you bring things down then you'll see that this module is actually isomorphic to this uh three's uh, module times z so when you bring things down the things that are brought down are exactly in this three module. so it just kind of defines uh the type of or class of modules that are generated by exponentials and the one we had here of course is the trivial case where all these polynomials are zero so the exponential is just one and you recover the original model okay. okay so now we have this space we have the definition of modules and we can finally ask and answer the question is what kind of left ideals in this completed reis val algebra are such that if I take the quotient of the algebra by the left ideal, I get a module of exponential time for some partition functions then of that type, right? So that's kind of equivalent to, uh, or at least it implies that the module will kill the partition function. That's by definition, because this will be the annihilator of the generator, which is the partition function. And that's really the question we're interested in. So that's kind of a more demodule formulation of, of what we started with this, this condition. And also the generator here will be uniquely fixed if you impose that these polynomials have no constant term. So that's an initial condition. If you impose that, then you can show this is uniquely fixed as a unique such generator for your module of exponential. So we'll give a unique solution to these constraints. Okay, and we will call such module, such uh, ideals, area. Area items or area structures as consecutive models. Any questions so far? Yeah, so it's exactly the same thing. So it's just a, a kind of a 
shorter way of writing it. So what you can do is you can expand these polynomials as, you know, some sort of uh, in your variables, something like coefficient like this in your variables, right, with some coefficients. And then you rearrange the coefficients. You just define G and N so that K is equal to 2G minus 2 plus N. And you'll see you get exactly the same expansion. So the FGNs are basically the coefficients of that the polynomial. But now instead of writing the sum in terms of G and N, I'm writing it in terms of the power of H bar. So that's really what, what, uh, what we care about. So, No, so th this was just for intersection numbers. Here we, we we're working in more generally, so the FGNs don't have to vanish uh, for for this kind of conditions. I mean that was true for the, the starting point, the conservative with within intersection numbers, but here they, yeah. I mean what what is important is the degree, though. I mean the degree is is bounded, right? So that imposes some conditions in G and N. So it's not like you can have for fixed power of H bar you can have get uh, arbitrary degree, but. Uh, Did I do that? I don't know. Let's see. K is what? But no, it was 2G minus 2 plus N. So N, yeah. No, it's exactly the same. This is exactly the same as the expansion I wrote before. It's just a matter of defining G and N. I mean, what you do is you define K equals 2G minus 2 plus N. And then you just rewrite. Well, this is going to be an example of this. So, so, so far, no, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the question. That's the definition of area ideals in some way, which is the answer to this question. So you're trying to characterize the left ideal such that this is true, right? So that defines a partition function. Okay, but there's a very, very simple way of characterizing these area ideals, which is extremely boring, but we're going to start with that. So if you want to kill this partition function, well, there's a very simple way of doing it. So you define operators that look like this. Uh, or Make sure I get the power right again. Yes. Right. So all I'm doing here is if you take the derivative of an exponential, you just bring back, bring down the argument and you take its derivative. So of course, this will kill that. Right. You can do that for all variables. So for all indices and in your index set, and you get a collection of differential operators that kill that partition function. Right. They're defined basically in terms of the data of the partition function. Okay, and then you can define the left ideal generated by those. We called it I bar, and it's clear that this uh, kills Z. And now you can ask, well, is it everything in the Val algebra that kills Z? So if you, if you fix Z, fix the partition function, is that everything? Is that the annihilator of that partition function? Or is there anything else? Turns out there isn't. This is actually the annihilator. So one way to prove it is quite simple, is to show the following. So these operators are obtained from the canonical operator, which is the derivatives, by an automorphism, which we call a transaction. So you can define a very simple automorphism that takes the generators of your uh, completed degrees of algebra and map them to, so you don't change h bar, you don't change the variables, but you map the derivative to these. So you basically kind of deform the derivative by this infinite sum of polynomials. You can show that this is an automorphism. So you have to show that the commutation relations are preserved, but the H bar commute with each other because of the way these polynomials are. They're derivatives of polynomials. So it's this commutation of partial derivatives. So it is an automorphism. So because this is an automorphism, then you know that indeed, uh, everything works out, right? Because you can define whenever you have an automorphism, you can define a twisted module. So, which is basically, I'm gonna write it as this. Oops. So what this is, is, is the same space. So it's still polynomial. So it's cyclic generated by one. 
still, still the same space of polynomials, but you twist the action. So what you do is you define the action here of your Val algebra, you define a new action on this space, on this twisted module. Well, the action is actually on the polynomial, uh, the space of polynomial, completed Ries algebra polynomials. Uh, and the, 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 the way you define the action, you take a differential operator, you act on a polynomial, and the way you do it is by twisting Right, so that's the standard construction of twisted module. And because of that, then you see that indeed, uh, this is uh, the left ideal here is the uh, annihilator because the left ideal is uh, the image of this canonical ideal, which was the annihilator of one. So everything is still true for the twisted module. So you get, uh, you get that indeed. Um, the twisted module here, sorry, I, I missed one step. So what you get here is that indeed, I mean, th this is true because you get a, a transaction, but the one thing that is I missed here is that you can also realize that this trans transaction is just conjugation by the partition function, right? Given any differential operator, if you only shift the derivatives by polynomials, what you're doing is just conjugating by the exponential, right? That's a standard, uh, standard calculation. So in other words, what you get here is that you can also think of this action here, in, instead of thinking of the action as being twisted, you can think of the action as being the standard action here, but where you do not act on polynomials, but you act on polynomials times the partition function. And that was the defined the finish of these exponential, these modules of exponential. So anyway, this, this might've been confusing and is not actually important for the rest. So you can ignore, that the, the end upshot of this here is just that the module of exponential type generated by Z is a cyclic module is generated by Z. And indeed it is uh, the, the quotient of the Ries Val algebra by this area ideal is isomorphic to this module. B, which is what we have. There's no, another, this is just a fancy way of saying that there's no other differential operators in the Ries Val algebra that are not in the left ideal that generated by this that kill the partition functions. So that includes everything that you want. Z is also unique if you impose that the polynomials here don't have constant initial emotion. But this is this is as I said, this is, I mean what could say is the answer it does characterize these left ideals, but it's very, very boring because you're characterizing the left ideals by giving a generating set which contains exactly all the information of the partition function. So it's, it's, it's basically useless, right? And you're just specifying, well, it's not useless, but you're just specifying the ideal in terms of the partition function or vice versa. So it doesn't give you any interesting information about the partition function itself. And so what we want to do, and that's the idea of area ideals. So I guess I have to have what, five, was that? What, 20? Oh, it's I don't know. You're not the chair. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Ten more? I don't know. Ten? Okay. That's also perfect. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say is going to be perfect. Uh, so, so yeah, so, okay, so this, this is a characterization, but that's a very boring characterization. Now, the interesting thing is the following result, which is due to conservative Subelman, and uh, in this language, we kind of reproved in our paper uh, from last year. The, full, the, the interesting result is that you can characterize these ideal in a different way, which is much more, uh, kind of more invariant. And the, the, the key idea here is that if you have a left ideal in an algebra, then of course you can find many generating sets. So one generating set is those, and that's a boring one because it includes all the information of the partition function. But if you can find another generating set, which is more interesting, that might actually give you some information. In fact, it might allow you to completely solve the partition function recursive. And that's exactly what happens for conservative as well. So that's the idea. And that's the theorem. So the theorem is the following. So let I be a left ideal in this uh, completed Ries algebra 
if it satisfies two conditions. So if I is generated by a collection of differential operator, let me call them H, not H bar, such that they all start with the derivative plus high order terms. But this is much more general than the H bar. So remember here, all the high order terms were just polynomials for a specific time. Now you can get derivative, you can get anything you want at high order. It doesn't matter at all. You can get anything you want. You just need to make sure it starts to linear. So in some way, you can think of it as some sort of deformation of the, 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 the canonical one, the derivatives. So that's the first condition. And the second condition is that if you commute ideal with itself, you get something that lies in h bar square times the left ideal. So if these two conditions are satisfied, then i is an area ideal or area structure. So I know, in other words, then all the properties are true. So that means that the quotient of the algebra by i will be isomorphic to a module of exponential type. So it will be completely, it will fix a unique partition function as being killed by the element of the, uh, the left ideal. So that's a much more general statement because, uh, well, you can get, I mean, this generating set is much more general than the one I had before. So that's kind of interesting. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the proof here because I don't have enough time, but maybe I'll just mention the two main steps of the proof. So the proof is actually quite interesting. But the two main steps uh, to prove this, oh, before I talk about the proof, I just want to highlight a few things. Uh, yeah, first I want to highlight that this condition is non-trivial because there's a lot of confusion sometimes. So one thing is that, you know, if you commute two elements of a left ideal, then you always stay within the left ideal. That's obvious because just write down the two elements of your commutator. There's always something on the right, which is generating the ideal. So you always stay within the ideal. That's always true. And it's always true as well that if you commute two things in the left ideal in the Val algebra, you always get something that you can always bring down an h bar square that just comes from commutation of, of derivatives and variables, which decrease degree by two. But it's non trivial to say that this thing you'll get here is in the left ideal. That's a very non trivial statement. And most often it's not true. For a general left ideal, that won't be true. Right, so that condition is very non-trivial. Okay, so, but that's, that was just a remark. Okay, and basically just the, the proof here, just to show you how it goes in two quick steps. The first step is to, what you want to do is show that this is an area, area ideal. So what you want to do is show that you can find another generating set here, which consists of operators like this. Right? And that will tell you that it's an area ideal. And one way to do it is to construct these H bar first explicitly. So what you want to do, and that's where the first condition comes in, you want to use this fact so that if you expand this H A for every term, you can transform the rightmost derivative by an H A again, up to higher order terms. So in the end, what this means is you can construct some, you can write, H A as something like that, plus an infinite sum in H bar whose coefficients are polynomials, plus something which is within the ideal. And then you define that as being the H bar and that within the ideal. Now, the only reason you can do that is because you're working in the completion. You really have to have infinite power series in H bar, otherwise there's no way you would be able to do it. So it's, it's, it's very important that you're working in the completion. But you can do that and you define the H bar as being these objects. And then you see that they are in the ideal. Now you have to check that they actually generate the whole ideal, but you can do that. And then the second step is you want to show that they commute. So you construct those as being the H bar. And you have to show that they commute uh, because if they commute, that means these polynomials, you can rewrite them as derivatives of single polynomials, that's Poincare's lemma. So you have to, show that they commute to do that. And to do this, this is where you have this condition. You have to use this condition. This condition, in fact, imposes that there is no non-trivial polynomial within the ID. That's the, the upshot of that condition. And that's, that's the key condition here to show that this is equal to zero. 
Okay, anyway, this is the, the main step. If you look at conservative supplement, this is not at all how to do it. So it's completely different from what they're doing, but it's completely equivalent as well. So that's just a different formulation of what they're doing. Okay, so I guess I have to stop soon, do I? So what, I, what I'll just say here is a few things. So I wanna say uh, why this is interesting. So the main reason why this is interesting is if you can find H A that are H bar polynomials. Okay, so what's the point here? So remember what we're doing here is we're constructing an ideal such that there's a unique solution to the, uh, the, the, the condition. So in other words, we're trying constructing an ideal generated by these H A so that they uniquely kill a partition function. Now, the, if they are H bar polynomials and all of the bounded degree, then that gives you a recursion and recursion for the coefficient of, of the exponential, right? Because this is the coefficient of the exponential is an infinite power series in H bar. And then you would have only a finite number of, of, of conditions. I mean, everything is infinite if your number of variables is infinite, but still less number of conditions in H bar. So that gives you a recursion for the coefficients, so a recursion for these polynomials Q or a recursion for the FGNs if you extend them in terms of coefficients. So that gives you a recursion in powers of H bar. So that's what you get, and that's what's called topological recursion. I mean, it's not usually formulated like that, but that's equivalent to topological recursion. So what this means is you, if you write down the, the, these differential operators very explicitly, then you can write a very explicit recursion for these FGNs, and that's what has been known as topological recursion. But the key here is just that if you can find a generating set for, ideal, for your ideal that is not in the completed algebra, but just in the uh, just H bar polynomials, that's where it's interesting. Otherwise, these are fairly boring structures. And an example of that is, of course, the one we started with, so conservative with. So in this case, we define these H A to be just the Virazo operator. So, I mean, we have to shift here if you, I mean, this doesn't matter. So these were something like that, plus terms which were actually quadratic. So I didn't write them down explicitly, but if you look at the definition of these conservative within operators, uh, so these irascible operators, there's a linear term, and then there's a term here which involves second order derivatives, and which is also a degree two polynomial in the axis. So that's an example of, uh, of differential operators that are H bar polynomial. They do satisfy this condition by construction here. And it's easy to show that, well, I mean, that's just the property of the Virazo algebra. So because this is true, That implies condition two, which is not too hard to show. In fact, condition two is completely equivalent to the statement that if you take the generators, the generating set and commute them, then you should get a combination of generators. But the coefficients in general don't have to be constant. They have to be in the algebra, so they're differential operators. In the case of the Virazo algebra, the coefficients are constant, so it's a simpler case. In general, this is completely equivalent to condition two. Right, so that's another way of characterizing the idea. But these Virazo operators are an example. The left ideal generated by those is an example of an area ideal. And there's a unique solution, unique partition function associated to those, and that's just the conservative written uh, generating function for intersection numbers. Yeah, this is just saying that these these coefficients here, because we're this condition is about the left ideal. So what you want to make sure is that everything stays within the left ideal, but these don't have to be constant. They just have to be within the algebra. Okay, so that's uh, that's the main construction. So I'm just gonna end by just telling you a few examples that you know, if all we were doing was reproducing conservative written, that'd be very boring. But it turns out that there's a lot of Lots of problems that can be formulated in this in this language. Yes. Yeah. So that's a very good question. So can you can could we kind of uh, I mean in some way that's a definition of these these ideals, but can we kind of understand better if you fix say the the degree. Suppose you fix the power of h bar. Can you understand better? Uh, I, yeah, that's a 
good question. So I, I don't have an answer. That hasn't been, but there is an actual classification problem if for like these kind of D modules or, or ideals in the completed Riesbach algebra. The fact is that this completed Riesbach algebra hasn't been studied that much, I think. But for us, I mean, the Val algebra is extremely studied, but with this Ries construction, but for us, it's absolutely key. So if you don't introduce H bar and complete an H bar, none of this holds. So this is a very, very important. Thing. Okay, but what people have done though, is, is more like uh, try to construct examples of area structures uh, or area ideals, and then uh, show that the Z, the partition function has an inverted mean. And turns out that there's a lot of such example. The first one, as I said, is conservative Witten. That was the starting point. But the second one, which comes very naturally, would be what's called the, the uh, Bears and Gross Witten BGW uh, example. So what happens here, so you take your operators to be again the Razon operators, but they look slightly different. They still are just a, a linear term plus a quadratic term, but it's a different um, representation of the Birazo algebra, uh, which we could write down. And then what you can show is that it is an area ideal and Z is a generating function for intersection numbers, but not the standard one. So now you have insertion of a class here, which is the what has been known as the Norbury or Kyoto class. It's an example of Kyoto classes are much more general than this. That's an example of it. And, and this has now been proved as a theorem. So you get this and also in this case, it's proved that uh, the Z is also a tau function for KDV, but with different initial condition is the PGW tau function for the KDV hierarchy. But that's another example, but then you can do much more. So what's key here is that this, because of this, this is, doesn't have to be a Lie algebra, right? Because these don't have to be constant. And in fact, a lot of examples are not Lie algebras and, and W algebras turn out to be a very fruitful sources of area ideals. So what this means is you pick a W algebra, for example, W of GLR, and you can construct, you look at the generator of the W algebra, you can construct a differential representations for these generators. In fact, you can construct many of those and you can show that they satisfy these. So we have a, a paper with Thomas and there's been further papers on this where we kind of classify those and, and then the enumerative meaning in general is still uh, unknown, but in some cases we get some enumerative meaning. So we get, for example, the R spin intersection numbers, the section numbers over the moduli space that occurs with R spin structure. We also get, uh, there's a recent paper by former student Nitten and his collaborators where they show that you can also get Kyoto classes for some, or some Kyoto classes for some R spin intersection numbers. And, but most of the cases are still up in the air with the enumerative implication. Is. So that remains to be studied. And there's lots of other example. We can construct area structure for all kinds of uh, W algebras. So SO2N, E6, SP2N, which we did in this paper with Aniket and so on, uh, we can show that we get uh, representations of those that are area structures, uh, but we don't know what the inverted interpretation is. And finally, there's, I mean, there's many more. One of the recent paper we wrote is we can use that to construct with Ecker vectors for W algebras, which are related to gauge theories and specific gauge theories and Gaiotto vectors and all this construction. Uh, so that's another thing we can construct. That you construct those as ba basically being partition functions. So generators of these modules of exponential type. So there's lots of, actually there's many more than that. There's also all semi-simple cohomological field theories fit within this framework as well. So whenever you have a semi-simple cohomological field theory, you can uh, rewrite the FGNs as correlators and you get an area structure. Um, not invariants also appear in this, I mean, there's lots of examples. So it seems to be a fairly general structure that is worth studying. So, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna end here because I should probably end by now. That's thank you, speak. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, comments for the speaker?
Right. So that's a very good question. So if you have an area ideal, you know that there's a unique Z partition function that is killed by the ideal. That's the, the definition of an area ideal. So the point here is that if if you're the, 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 the case where it's interesting is if you can find a generating set for your IRA ideal, which are polynomials in it, because then you, you basically just do a standard differential equation. You have a polynomial operator acting on a series, so you can get a recursion for the coefficients and you can solve recursively. That, that's exactly, I mean, conservation within is the example to keep in mind. So that's exactly how you construct all intersection numbers from these general constraints. You just have a quadratic differential operator acting on on Z, and you can solve recursively, and that gives you the standard recursion. Yeah, so, well, it depends what you're interested in, but yes, true. But in fact, in practice, how we construct area ideals is by constructing the generation set. So like all these examples, you start with some algebra. I mean, at least that's the point of view that has been taken so far. You start with some algebra, you construct the representation, Terms of differential operators show that satisfies that, and then you have for free that there's a unique solution. You can calculate it recursively. Right. So uh, FGRW, you mean, uh, should be in the list. It hasn't been, uh, I mean, it, it, it certainly has. It just hasn't been. So, I mean, yeah, the, the answer is. is as, as soon as someone does it, it will be in the list. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it, I, I, my expectation is yes. I mean, they, all, they should fit within this framework, but uh, yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So locally, that's why I'm, I mean, so that, I mean, yeah, one case I didn't write down here is also all Gromotin theory of Torek Calabio threefold. So all of those are also calculated by this and also Hervis numbers. So all kinds of flavors of Hervis numbers like, um, or before spin Herbert numbers, all of those also fit in there. So this construction here, if you look at local behavior that look like R spin, that should become FGRW. Uh, but yeah, so for compact manifolds, I know that doesn't really seem to fit in there. So yeah. So there are cases, I mean, semi-simple always work. There are cases where it's not semi-simple that works, like the Arkin case, but uh, why? No, it's not that it will not work. It's just that, as I said, there are cases where it's not semi-simple and it does work, like the Arkin and FGR that we do for the movie. Well, I, I mean, so originally, sure there's counting tables in the room that wouldn't fit in there. No, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. No, but I, I mean, yeah, no, I know. Complete intersections. Yeah, so, so you see something really interesting on that note is uh, that so there was a paper of a uh, Shadwin and collaborator like a few years ago where they studied it's called Atlantis harvest numbers, which is kind of a different flavor of harvest numbers that look like the R spin one. And they were really excited because they found a spectral curve and, and they real it was the same spectral curve as R spin nervous numbers. So they could basically they argued that this was a case that did not fit in this framework, but we just wrote a paper last month that shows that actually it does fit. But you have to extend the framework a little bit. So so that's so it seems like it uh, whenever you deal with intersection numbers of some sort from MDN bar, it's it seems like it fits, but I I mean it, I don't I mean the Virozer conjecture was proved only in a few cases. If you consider the modular stable maps to something, not only curves. Do you have any other example beyond those that were known? No, but I, the... I have to say the Virazo conjecture is quite different from that. So in the sense that if you take the Virazo constraints for general Gomotin theory, it doesn't fix partition function, which I, like already for Gomotin theory P1, but you have Virazo constraints, but it doesn't take it only fix the Descendant. Yeah, the there are these operators which annihilate all the generating series. I was wondering because you so said they don't, I mean, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're not at that point. Okay, so do you have any examples of modular of stable maps to something which, apart from Tori Columbia tree, which you know your every structures annihilate? Yeah, so Gomotin theory P1 is another example. And it's interesting here. I mean, that's the interesting thing. So there is an area structure that for Gomotin theory P1. And it completely fixes the whole Gomotin theory, the stationary set. So, and the operators are very different from the Okunkov 
uh, and like the uh, virus or operators, which uh, are, if I understand well, they don't fix the station, they only fix the assignment. Yeah, I, I forget, but uh, but there, but there is a, an area structure here, and it completely fixes the theory that was done by Norbury and uh, proved by Shadrin and collaborators. Um, so of course, Tori uh, What else? Well, I mean, there's all kinds of all the folds of those as well. So all the folds of all those that support um, algorithm theory. Okay, maybe I can ask you afterwards. This 